I am autism. I am visible in your children, but if I can help it, I am invisible to you until it's too late. I know where you live, and guess what? I live there too. I hover around all of you. I know no color barrier, no religion, no morality, no currency. I speak your language fluently, and with every voice I take away, I acquire yet another language. I work very quickly. I work faster than pediatric AIDS, cancer, and diabetes combined. And if you are happily married, I will make sure that your marriage fails. Your money will fall into my hands, and I will bankrupt you for my own self gain. I don't sleep, so I make sure you don't either. I will make it virtually impossible for your family to easily attend a temple, a birthday party, a public park, without a struggle, without embarrassment, without pain. Make a circle. Make a circle. Here is your autism fact for today that you might not have known. Did you know that there is a correlation between autism and what hand you write with? It is actually 2.5 times more likely for autistic people to be left-handed than it is for non-autistic people. And it is statistically more likely that autistic people are ambidextrous or mixed-handed. Though I tend to write with my left hand and my handwriting is better on my left side, I would call myself ambidextrous because I can comfortably write with both hands and I do a lot of things on either side. I switch between. Mixed handedness can show itself in lots of different ways. It could mean that you can comfortably write with both hands like me. It could mean that when you were given a pencil as a kid, you always switched it between hands and could never decide which one felt most comfortable. It could mean that you write completely with your right hand, but maybe you throw a ball with your left or cartwheel on your left. Not part of the diagnostic material for autism, but thought it was an interesting fact. Hope this helped. Five tips on dating someone with autism. Number one, there may be times when your partner is not looking at you when you're talking and it feels like you're talking to a wall. Don't worry, they're listening to you while not looking at you because they have a hard time doing eye contact. Blindfolds may be very helpful in the bedroom. Number two, sometimes your partner may have a hard time understanding jokes and sarcasm and they may get upset if you don't explain it to them. But if they had a lot of socialization as a child, they may be overly sarcastic and make a lot of jokes. But this may cause them to cross the line of what's funny and not funny and make it sensitive jokes. You can help with this as a partner by using safe words if they go over the boundaries. Your grandma died? I was still fucked. Red light. Consent applies in physical intimacy as well, so you gotta always have safe words. Number three, context mishaps might happen very often. You might be saying something and as a neurotypical person, you might assume that they understand the context behind what you're saying based on what you said previously, but they might have different thoughts. And this goes both ways. You guys might be talking about Ryan Reynolds and out of nowhere, your partner might be starting to talk about alcohol and you would have no idea why. In their head, they might have correlated with Brian Reynolds' alcohol brand. Just either parties always ask for clearance and context if you guys don't understand each other. Remember to communicate really well in the bedroom. Number four, they may have specific triggers when it comes to action or sound. They might not like loud noises. They might have a repetitive behavior that they always do. If the behavior is really bad and changeable, you can't do it really quick. You have to explain to the point. You have to understand very well and you have to transition out of that very, very slowly. Transition your body into their body. Number five, they may lack cognitive empathy, which means they won't be able to read your facial expression that well or the atmosphere of the room. As a partner, this may cause frustration to you because you want them to understand you. You have to try not to get frustrated and explain yourself as much as possible. Depending on who, you might also come across issues where they're more empathetic than you about your own problem. This may also cause problem in relationships because it looks like they don't understand your feeling. They're crying more about it than you are. Autism spectrum is huge and I can give you a general idea, but you need to ask your partner and know the details from them, their specifics themselves. There's no way that I'm autistic because I don't struggle with change. Let's turn on the TV. What do you want to watch? Uh, can we watch Friends? Again, we just watched all 10 seasons. Yeah, but that's my favorite TV show and that's the only thing that I want to watch. I don't want to watch anything else. Let's watch Friends again. Ugh, okay. You're wearing that again? Don't you own any other shirts? Well, I do, but this is my favorite shirt right now and I'm going to wear it until I find a new favorite shirt because it's really comfortable and I'm not ready to like wear anything else right now. 
Hey, do you want to go out to dinner right now? No. Okay, why not? Well, you see, I was already planning on having a peanut butter and jelly for dinner, and I already came to that conclusion. Like, I made up my mind, so I, I can't just switch and go out to dinner with you last minute. I mean, if you'd asked me yesterday, I would have said yes, but now I want my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Hey, can you get me my pen? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, this is a blue pen. This is this is not my pen. I write in black ink only and and this is blue. Can can you get me my pen, please? I can turn anything into an analogy. Like I'll make analogies about analogies. I get told all the time that I'm amazing at coming up with analogies. And it's so interesting to me because I don't understand how you couldn't be good at coming up with analogies because I feel like everything is interrelated. One of my favorite creators on here, The Starving Autist, made a video about how autistic people tend to be really good at coming up with analogies for things. And analogies give us this context as autistic people to fit things into patterns. I also think that part of it is I have felt like nobody could relate to me for so long that I'm constantly trying to find ways to relate myself to other things that everybody seems to understand. I think that's why I have a tendency to compare my autistic experiences to things like physical pain because it's the one thing I am positive that pretty much every person on this earth has experienced at one point or another. And so if you can relate to me on a level of experiencing physical pain in some way, maybe you'll understand my own autistic experience a little bit better. And it's also great for poetry. <laughs>